course, for giving us the space to have this. I want to thank uh, North Quad and uh, Energy Alliance for putting this all together. I want to thank uh, National Grid, because they're the right in the cost of all this material and everything. It's being done right now. They're, they're the sponsor of this. But I want to make sure that you get that. And also the uh, Barry Energy Committee for pushing to get this together. Knowing of what, what the frame looks like when, when you've milled it up, So you have something so that when you get back home, you have to do one of the assembly, you'll no longer be able to see what it looks like. You'll have this and you'll have the measurements on the piece of wood. Discard 
where you have imperfections and flaws. Because you may have a pitch pot, pocket in the wood, or you may have knots, or you may have checks in the wood, or wing. Or wing is when the, 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 the tree was the, the run off and the edge of the wood is, is uh, at, almost up against the top of the bark. So all that trouble things you want to do is end up with as much as you possibly plant can that's really clean and uh, uh, straight pieces of wood to assemble. Right? And we found that there's a number of ways to assemble these. Uh, the way we like to do in final planning is it really works quite well, is to do the uh, the uh, 45 minor cut. Um, it gives you a quick assembly, which is, uh, I'm going to get all the stuff out over here. Uh, anyone know where all the things are? So we use Gorilla Glue to put these uh, together. And um, it, it's, it's a little mess on your hands, but it, uh, it, it really bonds really well. Yeah. And you're going to see this done if you have one to assemble in one second. And so um, we'll, we'll assemble one so you'll see it actually fabricated. So you moisten the edges of the wood slightly, and then drill the little one on pieces, put them together. And we have a, I have a, uh, a, a pneumatic tool staple to shoot the nails together. You can do that with a four penny or a five penny nail, finish nail, uh, or a box nail for that matter put these together, and uh, the grill glue uh, with the combination of nails is an incredibly tight corner as you're witnessing in the, in the product. And then once the film goes on, it makes it that much tight. You know, if you're putting it together with a four penny nail, finish nail, um, you know, bright enough to finish nail, and we use two in each direction, so it would be two this way and two this way. And what you want to do is when you're putting them together, is to avoid having them and then come up into the track with a with mortise or the beam, for the screen beam. Because if you get one stuck in there, then when you go to put the beam in, it's stuck, it doesn't work. So you want to go into the, uh, where the full thickness of three quarters of material is there to shoot, shoot or drive an element. Yeah. Um, so some of the other ways you can do these corners, not to try to confuse you, but you may not have uh, you know, a wire or a wire to give yourself a lot of minor corners. So you can put them together and do it without putting the spline here and just simply do a butt joint to this. So here's the pride with it. So that's the butt joint. And pass that around. And so you can avoid the spline, the cost of the spline. And it's a different assembly, of which we're not going to we're not going to show you that one because that's the, the, the harder one to assemble. I might have to take more time wise. But you can do that, and I'm just going to, uh, as you witnessed at the last workshop, the way these go together is when you you tack these or screw these together once again with Gorilla Glue as a as a butt joint. But then when you put the film on, you wrap the film all the way around the product and it gets tacked to a double-sided blue strip on one edge of the frame. So on one side, it just goes right around and makes a big U around the, around the piece, okay? And then it gets glued on the, on the, on the outboard edge. And then you, of course, shrink it down with the air dryer and you know, you get a nice finish on it. But the frame, when you put it together, is simply putting the you know, butts together, tacking them or screwing them together with glue. So you, this, you want to tap the the uh, pilot the screw so that you don't split it. And maybe run a, a two and a half inch wood screw down, tap it down, do a pre-drill it, countersink it so that the head doesn't stick out of the wood. And you'll see on your frames, that's exactly what you'll end up with. You'll have the butt joint right there. They're glued and then they're tapped with a, with a countersink and uh, drilled out so they don't split. And then that gives you a nice tight joint. When you put this together, uh, you end up putting foam on the outside of the wood, you see the foam around, and it's going to want a sticky double side, you know, a sticky side of it. But if you don't seal the wood on the outboard edge, then it won't anneal to the wood. It, it, it always wants to come off. So you get a good adhesion to the wood. You put 
standing seal, all your credential seals, control for the coloration, it's a clear product, and they're all standing sealed, so that it gives you a good stick to the, to the, uh, to the product. If, if you build these things, you don't have to build with this size material. I wouldn't do anything less in dimension. But if you don't have access to a, a table saw to rip them, you can make them out of a, a, a different dimension, whatever you can get from the lumber yard, which is like a one by three, which is two and a half inches wide, which would be double the width of this. But you know, obviously that's going to blank out a lot of light, and you know, may not be a perfectly pleasing item. But you know, this, this as the end mentioned, it, it is it is a um, evolving piece, and and you may be the next gen generation of the evolution. So. There's other ways of doing this. It's not, it's not casting it's an absolute stone. The hybrid store foam that you buy um, is not UV resistant. So we've seen some three or four year old windsurts that were in the sun and this started to deteriorate a little bit. A little bit, not bad. Um, what some people do, I noticed that Leader Cosmer at Greenfield, but they have this closed cell foam. It is not a supple, it doesn't compress. It's going to be a bear to get your windsurt in and out. Don't buy closed cell foam. All right. If you find out after several weeks that there is condensation, significant condensation between your windsurt and your actual glass, you don't want to mop it up or you don't want it to sort of rot your, your wooden sashes, then take this foam and um, this is I credit Vic Corson with this. Lay a uh, on the windsurt, lay a little bead of clear silicone vinyl, you know, some sort of pock, spread it out with your finger, let it dry, and that becomes an air barrier. We didn't say why, why did they're really good, but they double the value of a two-pane window. Um, it makes, they make you feel warm. National Grid wanted numbers. They want data. They said, well, how do we know it saves energy? <laughs> That's why you checked off the box. on. The, they might contact you because they might want to interview you about how much energy you've actually saved, not just that you feel warmer. And then they um, stop air leaks in the windows. Um, so this really is about $13.50 in bulk. And like I said, this is um, the window film kit is $4, but it's really $2 if you buy it in bulk. And um, the foam is like $3.50. Um, <laughs> Peter Talmadge, I have to, um, he's an engineer from Northfield. Um, and I have to credit him with doing a little bit of math. Actually, how much energy in terms of gallons of oil does it really save? And you can calculate that at, um, Five, dot, five gallon, 5.9 gallons of oil. And this is the way you really do the math with heating degree days. We're not doing math this morning. I just wanted to let you know that it really is calculable. These are the tools that you need to, I'm sorry? Would that be if the whole house were done, right? No, that's one window. 5.9 gallons out of one dual pane window, yes. Um, you know, that has to do with how cold is it outside over the cold course of a winter. Yeah, per of course of over the course of a winter in this neighborhood, if you keep the interior at 68 degrees. Um, we went through this, how to measure, how to cut. Um, some of you might want to paint or stain your windows. You should do that before the plastic goes on, but we're not doing that today. Um, but if you do, you want to, um, again, make, it, make sure it's dry before you put it on. And this is, um, again, this is, um, yeah. This is a note, a butt joint frame, the way we used to do it, really easy to put together. Um, you can, we might put both um, instructions up there. Um, measuring your window, you all did a great job, I'm sure. Um, Neil, at a, we had a fabricator's workshop, now it's just pictures. Three weeks ago, it was about 42 degrees at the Millers River Environmental Center. This is um, Norman putting together a, um, a joint. We actually built the frames as well that day. Um, putting on the film, this is actually a pretty good example of how we've got a frame and then we're, we're doing a diamond shape with our film just to start the spline in the slots. And then we roller them into the, um, the spline, into the slots. We trim with a little knife the excess film. And we, we, <laughs> we go on the other side of the frame. <laughs> And you heat shrink. Now we only have a certain amount of hair dryers, so some of us can be heat shrinking and some of us can jump ahead to the next step, which is to put the foam on. It doesn't matter which goes first. That's cat ah, before you put the foam on, I guarantee you that some of us will forget to put our little pull tabs on. And I made pull tabs out of 
um, linen white cloth or um, brown uh, dungaree cloth. <laughs> we used to use hard, you know, like uh, credit card plastic, but it, uh, I realized when we went to store 16 Winserts that they, punct they get punctured by the hard plastic. So use soft cloth. Um, and on the foam, you can either wrap around the edge, but it's really hard to get that little triangle to seal, so we just, now we mostly just cut the foam and then um, stick the next piece going horizontally across. This is Brian fitting in the windserts at the Miller's River Environmental Center. It was 21 below zero that morning. Um, they really work. And then when you get home, um, if it's a little bit tight, you can either um, wax your window uh, jam extensions or jams, or Peter said he uses a frosting spreader. I, I don't know how many people have frosting spreaders. <laughs> and uh, that's it, that's it. So, um, Visit us at northbobbenenergy.org. That's okay, let's fill some windserts, yeah? So, these have already been sized and double checked to make sure that they're the right size. So, you line them up. Um, a little bit of Gorilla Glue quickly on the end.